Hi, cybersecurity class. It's Professor Opterbeck, and welcome to week three of our class. I really enjoyed reading your discussion post from last week, and I particularly enjoyed seeing you interact with uh, the paper of mine that I gave you to read, and I uh, some of the um, critiques I thought were really helpful, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure that I totally agree with what I wrote uh, a number of, of years ago when I wrote that. Actually, I think the most important critique that I got of the paper at the time that I wrote it was from someone who also was writing in the area of international law and um, the international law of war and drone strikes at the time, really at the height of the war in Afghanistan when there were um, a lot of targeted drone strikes. And this particular uh, legal scholar thought that all of these drone strikes were illegal under international law because they were illegal assassinations. And I think um, she had a pretty good argument to that effect. And she actually refused to give me a comment on my paper because she thought that even opening the door to having some kind of court would legitimize these um, targeted drone killings. So I thought that was an interesting critique. And, you know, I'm not honestly totally sure where I land on all of that. It's an incredibly complicated, you know, legal and ethical and national security question. And I wanted you to read it for this week, um, you know, because I've been seeing some more, more and more materials on that question of convergence that I mentioned last week, but I think it's also a question about how we are looking at cyber war more broadly. And that is the topic that we're really delving into this week. And as we delve into this, this topic this week, we're going to look at the international law of war. So we'll have the, the general background and really to summarize it in a nutshell, and under the international law of war, under the UN conventions, you cannot engage in offensive war. You can only engage in defensive war. Now you can act preemptively. Um, so, you know, if the, the, um, someone is masked at the border or is about to attack, you can act preemptively, but you're only supposed to act defensively. This is one reason why it's, it's pretty clear that Russia's war in Ukraine violates international law, but you can make arguments to that same effect uh, about the U.S. in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, if you remember the, uh, the Iraq war, the second Iraq war, there was this justification that there were weapons of mass destruction and so on, and it was a presentation to the United Nations by General Colin Powell, and all of that was to try and say, this is preemptive. Um, and it turned, it turned out that that justification um, wasn't correct. Uh, now you can have different views of that. You know, some, some people say, well, we thought there were WMDs and there weren't, and it was in good faith. There are other people who say all of that was ginned up from the very beginning, and, you know, we, we can uh, certainly debate those points. I've given you a bunch of materials to read that are, that are kind of both scholarly and applied materials, and most of them come out of the um, Talon Manual project, which is connected with NATO and with uh, a, a group of people from NATO and, and scholars and other people. So as you'll see, there's, there's a whole manual and there are different papers that are, that are produced, and I'm, I'm giving you some of those to read. And you can sort of view these as a um, high-level, uh, somewhat formal effort to talk about cyber and the law of war. Now, Last year, I had Major Laura West, who is a, an Army cyber um, person, speak to the class, and she's going to speak to us again at our first summit. And it was really interesting um, speaking with her. She's also a scholar in this area. You know, um, we've interacted a little bit on, on scholarship. And, um, you know, her, her view, and apparently the Army's view of, of the Talon Manual, is that it's really unworkable and impractical. Uh, that, that cyber is actually a bit different, and in particular, um, there's a role for offensive cyber that is different than the traditional law of war. So, you know, read these materials, read them with a little bit of a, um, not a skeptical eye, but just realize that uh, the people on the ground, at least in the U.S., uh, have questions about these things, and we can talk with Major West when she comes to our, our summit more about these things. I also gave you a couple of recent articles uh, from Lawfare. You can see Lawfare is one of my favorite sites for all of this stuff. I thought they were both just sort of interesting. They're relatively um, brief. 
Jason Healy, the author, uh, author of the one on cyber brandishing, um, you know, as you have seen, has written some other things, and he's also going to be a guest at our um, at our upcoming summit. So I wanted to give you some more recent stuff of, of his to read. Um, the the Sherman piece about uh, undersea cables is really interesting. Of course, we we saw recently an act of uh, what was probably sabotage, and it's not clear by who, um, of some undersea um, internet uh, communication cables. Uh, and when you step back a second and you realize that all of this infrastructure, um, particularly internationally for the internet, all comes down to physical infrastructure, and it comes down to you know some discrete and identifiable set of cabling, sets of cabling that run under the seas. Um, there are some real questions about how to secure that, how that relates to international law on the high seas and other things like that. So that's why I wanted to give you that to look at. So enjoy these materials this week, and I look forward to seeing you in the discussion boards.